Hello, Calvary family again, Coffee with Clark. It's good to see you again, and I wanted to uh, review uh, the events of, of Holy Week. And now we're looking at uh, Monday, and significant event is the cleansing of the temple, which is also spoken about in Matthew and Mark. Uh, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 19, verses 45 through 48. And then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Let me pray. Father, I thank you. For those who are listening and those who are evangelizing their friends and loved ones and God I pray you would use these videos that we're doing uh, each day to bring hope and encouragement uh, to one another but more importantly Lord I pray that you would use each of us to proclaim the good news to a world that is in desperate need of good news in this time of adversity in our world uh, be glorified be magnified and may all your people be blessed we pray in Jesus name amen so we're just looking at a few verses today actually uh, 45 through 48 and this shows the heart of the Lord in regard to his holiness uh, all of us are in process of becoming more holy as he's holy the Bible tells us without holiness no man shall see the Lord and the problem with the modern church uh, not unlike the early church is that there was periods of declension whenever the church was very uh, persecuted, and also very desperate for the presence of God in their lives in the midst of tremendous adversity. And right now, the world, for the most part, is um, sort of maneuvering this crisis we're in in various ways. Um, there's conspiracy theories, all kind of different rhetoric going around about why, how this happened, why it's happening, all this kind of thing. But the, at the end of the day, those of us who know the scriptures and know the Lord, we believe in his divine providence and sovereignty. So we can have the assurance in this that the Lord's got everything under control and that we don't have to fear. We can just day by day walk through this together, keeping our eyes upon him. But the Lord in his grace breaks into the world and into the environment to get his point across that we as his people need to repent and need to turn to him always. And repentance, the Greek word of uh, met, uh, metanoia is an active verb tense, meaning it's something we do continually. Just not when we come to faith in Christ, Lord, forgive me of my sins, save me. That's all important. That's the beginning of our experience of uh, salvation. But uh, repentance is a daily, moment by moment event of pleasing God and turning from the things that don't please God. And so in this instance, the, the people in the temple were using it for selfish, greedy motives and manipulating the population to uh, buy things and uh, sell things. And uh, this was not a good thing. They've, they've turned his, his uh, temple that he had established to be a place of prayer. Uh, they've made it a den of thieves. So uh, he, he clears the temple out and quite violently he turns the tables upside down. Um, gets the whip out and uh, chases them out. I mean, it shows the, the wrath and the anger and at the same time the love of God because he wants his church, his body, his people to be a pure bride. It tells us in Ephesians one day he's going to present his church, his bride, without spot, without blemish. And I used to wonder how that would happen knowing that the church in the days we live is very much like the church in Revelation of uh, Ephesus and Laodicea. Ephesus left their first love of Christ being the supreme person that they worshipped every day in their lives. They had entered into idolatry, worshipping of self, even though they were still proclaiming the truth of God's word, they had become very weak. And the church of Laodicea uh, didn't understand that they were naked, poor, wretched, and blind. They thought they were doing everything right. And, and the Lord said through uh, the Spirit of God that the churches, all the churches, including ours, need to repent and return and do the first work, lest he would take the lampstand out, the influence of that church to the world. And so I think right now in my own life, everybody I talk to, Second Chronicles 7.14 is a huge prayer. 
I know it was for the nation of Israel that it's applicable to us as God's people. That it says in verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, it says, I will hear their prayer from heaven and heal their land. For me personally, I believe the only solution to this epidemic, this pandemic, is the power of God in doing a miracle when it does eventually unwind. So I'd encourage you to spread the word of this particular section of Scripture today and also 2 Chronicles 7.14, that if each of us, if millions of people would get serious about what the Word of God says, uh, we can have hope that tomorrow will be much different than today. So God bless you guys. Love you. Stay tuned for the next update.